Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Cancer Full Moon video. Um, I'm actually recording this at the solstice, so happy solstice as well. And um, this is uh, a very interesting time, of course, in the time of year. It's a, a time where we want to actually pull inward. Um, these, what in, uh, in the Indian tradition are known as Sandhya um, times, these, these times of uh, shifting or what we could call liminal times are really good for turning inward and that applies to the 21st of June as it does to the 21st 22nd of December um, it also applies for example to the dawn and to the dusk so these are times to go within and uh, and settle a little bit so this is the original meaning of Christmas uh, Christmas was the emergence of the light after this period of turning within as the Christ has risen, the sun is rising. And so here we have a full moon marking a couple of days after Christmas, uh, where the sun is starting to emerge in, a, in the northern hemisphere, at least, uh, in uh, longer and longer days as they pick up speed throughout the the next few months we get several minutes more each day as we build up to June. Uh, we have a really interesting theme here, um, always at Christmas time, always at the Cancer Full Moon, it's always the theme of family and nurturance and this, this sort of push and pull between responsibility and nurturance or what you might consider to be your ambition and your inner needs that are being somehow tugged at in different ways. So here we have a, a moon that is at almost five degrees of Cancer. And, um, and this is a time uh, or a, a phase of the moon, for example, where um, we see the nakshatra of Ardra. Uh, Ardra nakshatra runs pretty much from um, just over zero degrees of Cancer. I think it's zero 40 something minutes of cancer, tropical cancer, um, and it goes all the way up to 14 something degrees of cancer. So this, this is, uh, the moon is within that. And I'm mentioning that this time, I don't always pick up on the nakshatras, but uh, when I, when I do, it's because they're so significant in terms of what we're experiencing collectively, and maybe even individually. Uh, Ardra is the um, teardrop. It's the nakshatra that is ruled by Rudra. Rudra is the, uh, what you could call the fierce version of Shiva. This is, Shiva is the, um, the energy of dissolution and change and rebirth. And Rudra is the quality of the dissolution, is the quality of the destruction aspect of Shiva. Um, and so it has a lot to do with feelings of uh, being abandoned or let down, uh, tragedy, sorrow, difficulties. And so you might have planets in that area, especially the moon that will make that a very strong emotional connection. Um, any softer planets tend to have more difficulty with this particular placement. Um, this, for example, at this uh, full moon, this full moon point is where we find Israel's Venus, um, and it's also within the nakshatra that we find the USA's sun. Uh, it corresponds to Betelgeuse, uh, which is in the shoulder of Orion. And, um, and that's a, a challenging but very bright and powerful star. Um, so it's really about how we use our capacity to regenerate. And um, I happen to have a moon here in the last uh, degrees of this nakshatra. Um, and I can attest to the qualities of the need to constantly um, regenerate after periods of loss and suffering and difficulty. And the, in fact, the next nakshatra afterwards is Punarvasu, which is uh, about coming into the light. It's, it's about recovering and moving through the difficulty and coming into the light. So this is how I see the, the phases of the moon at the moment where we're looking at this period of time that we're going through that is collectively really, really difficult. Um, and always remembering that there is this phase of need to go deep into the breakdown, deep into the suffering, and then move beyond it. And there's always a dawn after the, the night, the, 
the the darkest phase of the night is just before the dawn always that's the strange feature of the night is it gets really really dark and then the dawn breaks and so uh, we can think about this and in, in very symbolic terms however that might apply to our our individual life and certainly collectively we can see that um i just want to point out some more things about this nakshatra because it does speak so clearly to our collective emotional situation um, and and the difficulty that we have in processing it because it's always difficult as humans to let go and to change and especially because it's in this energy uh, which is about our um, it's that capacity to nurture or our capacity to feel very intensely. So anyone with uh, Ardra placements feels very sensitive. It's very, very, uh, very intense um, feelings, very sensitive and perhaps even um, with a, a kind of a, um, a potential for, um, I'm losing my words, I'm so tired, I'm sorry. Um, lose the the sense of uh, understanding the sense of almost psychic awareness uh, comes through this moon um and so the symbolism with rudra is that um he he drinks uh, the poison um in terms of testing um and uh, and that is to be able to then uh, administer the medicine or administer the healing to other people um, you see that in the image of Shiva with the blue throat, Nilkanta, um, for those of you who are aware of those symbols uh, from the Indian tradition. And if you've ever been to India, you'll see Shiva in that blue throated um, metaphor where it's about holding the poison to, uh, to prevent further harm. And it's often true that healers are in this uh, kind of energy of Rudra. There's more nakshatras that have this quality, but Ardra is the one which is associated with suffering and loss. And through that suffering and loss, we have this choice of staying in the suffering. It's not what, what is intended, but uh, or we can um, evolve through the, the suffering and then help others to you know kind of drink that poison or find the, the way through our own suffering to heal other people. So this is where we can reflect on these um, coming days around this solstice period and around the Cancer full moon, trying to realize where it is that we might be holding on to suffering and not fully um, moving into the healing aspect. Um, this would be a very important thing to uh, overcome consciously. Um, we, we need to do this as a collective where we're really uh, creating just more and more uh, suffering. Um, so there's this this quality of uh, recycling that comes through Ardra Nakshatra, which is about rebuilding, regenerating after difficulties. It's a, it's symbolized also by the storm. Uh, Ardra is the, both the teardrop, meaning the the sadness and the loss. And um, people with Ardra Moon, especially or soft placements in Ardra, often really easily cry. Um, that would be me. My kids know I would always bring uh, my hanky to a film, regardless of what the subject was. I knew that somehow I would end up crying and uh, they just kind of roll with it. Um, and so it's this it's this quality of uh, shedding and uh, crying that is quite like that same purification of a storm. Um, if you think of a storm as clearing the atmosphere, it it has the, the atmosphere builds up to such uh, an extent that the storm has to uh, come to shift the atmosphere, to shift the, the quality of the air um, and the quality of the, the energy around the storm. Um, and after the storm, notice that it's always clear. This is this uh, almost cruel paradox of, uh, you know, after a hurricane or a tornado, there's these clear, bright blue skies. And it's kind of like, almost feeling like you're gaslit. Did that really happen? Is it, did that, all the, all that lays bare is the destruction, but the skies are sunny and clear and it feels like such a, a paradox. Uh, and we can have this experience in our own lives. And of course, collectively, we are um, encountering this right now. Um, so it's important also to feel that this, um, you know, this understanding of the quality of transformation is, is really huge in this time. Uh, this, this is the symbolism of the Christ uh, rising at Christmas time. Uh, this is the symbolism of 
the solar uh, emergence after this period of solstice and uh, the full moon is the energy of the, the clarity that we get, the, the awakened consciousness that we can have or realizations that we can have around our own um, issues around suffering. Of course, that, um, that Cap Cancer Capricorn axis can be parents, it can be family related. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's that nurturing quality. Um, but it also can um, be about our our government, of course. It can be about the people who, um, so-called uh, leaders, <laughs> rulers, um, that we are uh, dealing with and how we deal with them, how we transform and move through that. Um, you know, I it's not for nothing that I called my own website Nurturing Transformation because this is such a feature of my life, this uh, energy of Ardra Nakshatra and... Um, Actually, I forgot to even uh, use the usual plug. I'm not so good at that, but um, that's another feature of Ardra and Moon is that they just kind of want to be quiet and left in their own corner. Um, so I'm not so good at the publicity stuff, but just to say, I am a consulting astrologer and I work with tropical astrology and I, I absolutely love helping people to uh, transform and to see themselves. And this is why, this is not why, it's one of the reasons why. Uh, I named my site um, Nurturing Transformation. Uh, and since we're at the Christmas and holiday period, if you're interested in a gift, you can always get a gift certificate from my site as well if you are stuck for something to give to somebody. Right, okay, so the shameless plug is over. <laughs> um, let's come back to ourselves. So um, so this energy of healing and this um, this quality of clearing the air is very important. And the the higher manifestation of this is to do so through our own process as opposed to lashing out. Uh, it's really important. I want to read to you something uh, that uh, somebody I consider very, uh, very helpful in my career as an astrologer. That's Victor Cara, uh, somebody uh, who I admire as a teacher, has written a book called Nakshatras. And so Vic's book has uh, also given me a lot of really interesting pointers uh, for both myself and for clients. Uh, if you're interested in these kinds of things, I highly recommend the book. Um, and I just want to read what he says about this. I'm just picking little bits of it. It's more, of course, in depth in the book. And go ahead and buy his book if you want to know more. Um, so he summarizes the meaning of the Nakshantra as saying the God, and this is coming from the original mantra, by the way, which is coming from uh, the Vedic texts, which which explain what these Nakshantras represent. Uh, nakshantras being sidereal or star-based and not connected to the tropical zodiac, which is a different story again. Um, but the original translation, let's say, of this meaning is the god of this nakshatra, remember uh, Shiva, in the form of Rudra. Um, the benefic So the god of this nakshatra is a beneficent destroyer. He uses his anger to protect innocent prey or innocent uh, people. Uh, by destroying predatory hunters. And so this is really what the um, ferocious quality of this is. There's this kind of bitter anger that can be um, felt in this nakshatra, where there can be a sense of unfairness or injustice uh, that comes through uh, the tragic and unnecessary wounding of others. And so people with this particular nakshatra, again, especially... Um, if it's if the moon is in good dignity or if the planet that's in this nakshatra is in good dignity, that makes a big difference. Um, not um, not a, in difficult positions with other planets, for example, you get the best quality out of that. Um, when it's functioning properly, it is destroying the things that need to be destroyed. Again, this is coming from Vic. And it is merciless towards the wicked, the false and the deceitful. And when Ardra malfunctions, it does not discriminate well about what should be destroyed and what should be preserved. And we can think about that as a lashing out, uh, where the functioning is no longer about the, um, the quality of integration, um, acceptance and moving through the pain and then transforming that. Uh, instead, there's a lashing out because the pain is being held on to. Um, and then the life lesson that Vic uh, describes here is that we're learning from 
the Ardra Nakshatra Sutra that anger and outrage and destruction play a valuable, important role in life. And we shouldn't shun that. We shouldn't avoid that because there is such a thing as righteous anger. And, you know, being in this space of love and light and uh, peace and all that stuff uh, is, uh, is appropriate when it's authentic, but very often it's not authentic and it comes from people uh, who are spiritually bypassing and um, moving away from what is this, uh, this either resentment or feeling of anger or even the righteous anger because there's a feeling that uh, that's not spiritual and that's uh, absolutely not the case as we see with the image of the fierce gods uh, throughout the pantheon of um, whether it be the Greek or Roman or, or Indian gods, there's always a quality of fierceness and that goes along with the quality of benevolence. Um, Vic continues, he says, it's a moral and spiritual virtue to harness anger and to use it to destroy predators who would violate and exploit the innocent. Anger must never be allowed to leak out towards innocent and tender creatures. Let us repeat that. Anger must never be allowed to leak out towards innocent and tender creatures. This is where our healing is central. It's extremely important. Um, again, I'm speaking here collectively for all of us, and of course, particularly with this reference to this moon. Now, if we think from the tropical zodiac manifestation of this being a cancer moon to in sidereal um, in the sidereal degree points, this is all in Gemini, but in the tropical degree points, it's in Cancer. And we're not really meant to use the nakshatras in combination with the tropical or sidereal uh, zodiac. They are standalone because they reflect the stars. Um, but so what I'm doing now is I'm switching to the tropical definition of the Cancer um, moon, which is very much about this nurturing and healing quality, about this emotional sensitivity and about this capacity to integrate um, emotions, but uh, feeling that expression of the emotion is important to be able to heal. Um, the quality of cancer is the quality of mother. You know, in the healthy archetype of a mother, uh, it's all about nurturing and healing. There are, of course, unhealthy mothers, but that's not the archetype of the mother. That's, that's a pathological version of a mother. Um, and so what, what comes across with a, Cap with a Cancer moon is empathy, where Capricorn can be more standoffish, um, more grinchy, uh, misanthropic is the word where it's really about just, you know, please go away, I, I'm, I've done. And that can be the shadow of Cancer as well, when Cancer is not taking care of its own needs, it becomes um it needs space and this is why cancer retreats when their when their boundaries are not good they they then want to get away from other people but it's because the boundaries have been crossed uh, without them having established good boundaries so uh, the cancer moon represents that healing quality which is welcoming to people which is about nurturing which is about that soothing uh, quality of the mother again or the, the divine feminine you could call that um, and so you find a lot of empaths with this uh, cancer moon and you find that with all almost all of the water moons to a certain degree um, other placements of course too the earthy placements for moons are very good too but um, that depends uh, Cap Capricorn moon is in its fall and therefore uh, or rather yeah in its um, detriment and so it's struggles to find empathy and cancer struggles because it is so empathetic um, and so when we think about empaths um, what we want to understand is that that's not uh, it shouldn't be a 24-7 role um, empathy should have healthy boundaries as well and when we understand the different sort of layers of um, you know our our human dimension then we can manage our empathy uh, this uh, whether this applies to you in terms of understanding the world situation or in terms of understanding your own personal situation you can think about this as part of the resolution of this uh, over empathizing or over sensing what's going on because empaths tend to focus too much on the interpersonal stuff they tend to focus too much on what is 
other people's uh, effects or, or um, consequences, how they are affecting their life and their, their energy and their mood. Um, that's not necessarily a good spiritual quality. That's a sign of bad boundaries. So it's really important to understand these other aspects of ourselves, starting with the physical body. Uh, the moon represents our body as, as well as our mind and emotions, but the moon is our physical body. And so um, we want to understand that our physical body is always telling us accurately how we're doing. And so if there is uh, no process of connection with the physical body, whether that just be sitting still and breathing or going out and being in nature, which is really helpful for this energy of this uh, Cancer moon, especially in this nakshatra, Ardra nakshatra, the first half of Cancer, basically. Um, the, the connection with nature is extremely important. Being physically aware is part of the fulfillment of our um, human experience. Um, and it helps to balance out that overemphasis on uh, interpersonal relationships and that that comes that ties in also the physicality ties in with our intrapersonal relationship meaning our relationship with ourselves you know are we are we taking care to heal ourselves and therefore becoming the potential healer if we're not taking care of ourselves we we fall short or we can't cope uh, it becomes overwhelming um, then you can get into that victim energy which all the water moons can very easily fall into uh, the earth moons too can get stuck in that. Um, and then there's also, of course, our spiritual dimension, and that has to factor in as well. Um, and that spiritual dimension is recognizing when no is no. I had this uh, yesterday when I was about to do this uh, video, and I just realized I just had nothing in the tank. I really couldn't do it, and I needed to step back. Um, I needed to... Um, to recognize where I had to take care of myself as a priority. It wouldn't have been a very interesting video anyway, um, because I wouldn't have been in a good shape to do it. So, um, so that's part of that spiritual and intrapersonal uh, attention that we pay to ourselves. We all have this. It doesn't, you don't have to have a cancer moon to, to need that. Um, and, um, and that spiritual dimension is also not just our connection to whatever is our guiding light, whatever is our connection to life source itself, um, but it's also what we consider to be our purpose and our meaning, that the meaning that we give to life. There's no inherent meaning to life. It's the meaning that we decide. Um, and understanding that meaning also helps to keep us balanced because it gives us a sense of the, the purpose that is like the Japanese call it the ikigai, which gets us out of bed. And it, it's the thing that helps to keep us focused on what we're doing. Um, and when we're focused on that and we're focused on our, our physical well-being and we're focused and which includes, of course, our mental well-being, as well as that spiritual dimension that it feeds into the, the spiritual and mental well-being. Uh, we're in a good place, even in a in the midst of a storm, <laughs> even in a bad physical place in a bad situation we can stay in a good place because we're recognizing that we are moving beyond the uh, the events we're not having to uh, absorb them like a sponge but rather we are um, feeling that conduit energy of transmuting something this is the energy of ardra nakshatra and it can be the energy of a cancer moon if the cancer moon is able to take good care of itself um, so yeah, that, uh, keep that in mind because this will apply again and again and again is as, as we go forward in the next years, this is not a one-off year in the, in this season, we're entering some really challenging times. Um, uh, we are entering in a major phase of transformation in humanity and in our global, um, human experience, we'll call it. Uh, our global uh, life experience, because of course it's uh, it of course concerns other animals. That's another thing about Ardra. Uh, it's good to have a pet <laughs> uh, for anybody who's got placements in Ardra. It's really helpful to have a pet. Um, they keep the Ardra energy grounded, and it's a, a healthy way of um, looking after another life source and not feeling necessarily drained by it. If you do feel drained by it, go back to what I said about the boundary. Um, anyway, 
let's get uh, looking deeper into this. We've had uh, we've now fulfilled fulfilled the Cancer Moon aspect of this full moon. Um, but I also want to look at the other aspects of this chart. So um, the Cancer Moon, of course, is in its rulership, and so it's in really strong dignity, and that um, emphasizes what I've just said. So that is really important to keep in mind that the Cancer Moon is is uh, kind of the feature of this chart in more ways than one, um, because it is actually, I think it's literally the only thing that is in its own dignity. Yeah, there's nothing else in dignity here, um, in its own um, happy place. Uh, we have um, Venus in uh, rulership of uh, Jupiter, which is about to station direct, which is lovely. Uh, but because Jupiter is retrograde and Jupiter is um, is also ruled by an unhappy Venus, this is a very emotional Venus when Venus is in Scorpio. I did a video about that. If you want to know more, I won't dwell on it here. But Venus can be very intense and emotional, um, potentially, um, you know, overly, um, uh, overly dramatic uh, is another way of uh, saying this. And we do have that Venus in a, a strong trine to Neptune. Um, and so where the Venus is trining Neptune, it may not be very clear. Um, the rationale may not be very clear. So again, this is another good reason to park yourself in these days as much as you can. Park yourself in a quiet place and, um, and not take in too much uh, or let's say take in what you want to take in, but not necessarily uh, believe it or not necessarily trust it. Uh, the Neptune is in a very strong square to a retrograde Mercury, which is also ruled by that Jupiter retrograding. And that Mercury is retrograding back into Mars. Uh, both Mercury and Mars and Sagittarius are pretty off the cuff. They fly off the handle pretty quickly. They jump to conclusions pretty quickly, especially when in a square to Neptune, it's just not easy to find clarity of uh, thought or um, purpose, even especially in that context of Mars. Mars representing our purpose, representing our, um, not our life purpose, but our, our goals, let's say. Uh, Mars representing our actions. So uh, hang back. In this uh, season, Jupiter is will improve. Things will improve when Jupiter moves uh, direct from the thirty first of December, universal time. For some of you, that'll be the thirtieth. If you're in North America, uh, South America, for example, the rest of us, it's the thirty first. Um, Mercury itself will be uh, stationing direct on the 2nd of January. And again, for some of you, that's going to be the first, but uh, for most people, it's the 2nd of January. Uh, and so that things will start to clarify. So maybe to the extent that it's possible for you, um, and this is certainly what I've been telling a lot of my clients, uh, especially those who are personally affected by these different placements right now, just hang back, don't do a lot, uh, don't plan too many things, they won't necessarily work out the way that you would like them to. Um, don't for sure uh, judge with any certainty what is going on. Um, most especially keep the most high, high minded uh, attitude to everything that is going on. There is always a, a capital T truth to life. Uh, even if the relative truth is a bit fuzzy. Uh, so reach for the capital T truth. Um, so this moon is also in a sextile to that Jupiter that I've just described. So the Jupiter is supporting the moon-ish, but it's moving away from the moon. And um, uh, yeah, it's uh, in, the, in, in the lack of dignity, let's say, or the lack of uh, support, it means that we're not going to get the same kind of emphasis. Um, so, for example, the Venus uh, in the Israeli chart is on this moon. And if these planets were in better dignity, I'd say, hey, that could represent some kind of accord or some kind of resolution to the, the genocide and um, ethnic cleansing that's going on. Perhaps we can see some kind of pause in that. 
um, but I'm not seeing it because there's not a strong enough dignity. Um, also, we have uh, we have Pluto at the very last degree of Capricorn, and uh, that's intense. <laughs> Speaking of uh, intensity, Pluto and Venus are sextiling. And so Venus sextiling Pluto is um, compulsive, emotionally intense uh, relationships um, that tend to be controlling, tend to be unhealthy. Uh, if I see these aspects in a natal chart, I do caution people to be careful who they engage with and, and how. Um, it's, it's very difficult to balance that kind of energy that Pluto, um, when it's in an influence to a Venus that's not in strong dignity, it's, it's, a, it's a tough road. Um, uh, Pluto is also in its ongoing forever sextile with Neptune, which won't be broken for quite some time so that's a that's a sign of our times it's like a century long thing that there's a sign of our times is this confusion and delusion and um, lack of lack of clarity around what is uh what is important what is real uh, it's what has brought us the intense um on the on the one end um uh, spiritual awakening because that could be the let's call it the better use of this in energy um, but also it, it is part of this uh, whole manipulation that we have been collectively withstanding with, with the um, just massive, massive rise of propaganda over the last century. Um, so that's, that continues. And so we, we need to be spiritually aware. You go into that sense of yourself with that Ardra moon, you go into yourself physically, uh, know what is true uh, for you, know what is true in your body. Anger, hatred, um, the will to destroy, the will to um, harm is never true. Uh, that's that's the furthest thing that we can get from uh, truth. Um, truth and and what is uh, what is right, uh, what is what you could describe as righteous, is always going to have a quality of expansion and healing. Uh, a quality of expansion and uh, grace and we when we're feeling anger and resentment hatred uh, de desire to harm desire to destroy uh, we feel contracted and hard and non-receptive uh, non-receptive to touch non-receptive to information non-receptive to compassion and that's not true that's a that's an energy of um, delusion uh, so beware of that on the topic of delusion <laughs> we want to just have a wee rant one last little rant i think was, i've done a lot of ranting so far um, i just want to have one little rant please grant me this moment of ranting about the uh, galactic center um so we've had Mercury, the sun recently passed through the 27 degree point of Sagittarius and Mercury has passed through that point and it will pass through that point again in January uh, once it stations after the second and moves back into Capricorn. So the 27th degree of Sagittarius represents the galactic center, which uh, to my mind has no astrological significance. It's something that is um, quite a new agey thing. It's a very recent discovery anyway it's only a couple of decades that we've known it which doesn't mean that we can't understand it but uh, the the meaning that often is attributed to that is a spiritual awakening or expansion um, or some kind of uh, there's always these very lofty um, ideals around it that are a bit vague and I'm, if anyone can let me know in the comments how that can actually be used in somebody's life I try to be really pragmatic with the astrology I try to be helpful you know, we get a bad, bad rap as it is as astrologers without needing to add on all kinds of things that are really pretty far out there. Um, so the center of our galaxy, the galactic center, which sounds super awesome, certainly great clickbait. Um, the center is a super massive black hole. Um, if you understand anything about black holes, whether they're super massive or not, they are... Uh, they suck in, they pull in, they they kill um, stars. Any any matter that um, pulls into their uh, into their vicinity, into their orbit, um, they disappear. 
that's the literal meaning of a black hole is something gets sucked in and disappears. So I don't know how that relates to expansion or spiritual awakening. Again, please help me in the comments if I'm missing something. Um, so you won't be hearing me talking about the galactic uh, center. I have the same kind of rant every August around the Lionsgate. So please, again, tell me what that means and how I'm supposed to understand that astrologically. Uh, and even how anybody came up with that idea, I'd love to know. Um, so just to say, one of the things that we are really, 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 really assaulted with these days um, is uh, craziness, like information that comes kind of out of the blue. But people are so unmoored to reality or to what they consider to be a spiritual guidance or a spiritual anchor um, or even a human anchor for that matter, that uh, they become very susceptible to uh, believing. Now, here I am, I know I'm an astrologer and I'm in one of the wackiest um, roles that society ever <laughs> could create, but, um, but I, can, I can defend most of what I find in a chart. I can actually find something in a chart that people will resonate with and it will be specific. Um, when things are, are vague and a little bit airy-fairy, um, that just feels like blowing sort of sunshine up the wazoo. It doesn't really feel like uh, a helpful thing. And we need more people to be moored to uh, what you could describe as a human experience, our, our reality, our, our lived experience. Some people would say that, that lived experience. Um, our spiritual guidance comes from deep inside. It doesn't come from 26,000 light years away, which is the distance between us and the galactic center. So look inward. There's nothing separate from you and any other feature of the entire universe. There are no beings from out there because it's all part of us, whether you want to call them aliens or not, meaning they're non-human. That's that's just a descriptive. It doesn't mean they're they're from another uh, place that that we can even define as separate from ourselves. Everything is a part of who we are, and this is why violence is wrong, and this is why we feel awful when we witness violence. Um, this is why we contract and resist when we feel anger and violence, rather than feeling that expansive, open sensation of. Um, of the divine mother, divine grace, uh, when we're experiencing love and compassion. So I invite you to be uh, discerning about how you absorb your information about anything, but especially about uh, things that are designed to uh, help you spiritually or, or psychologically grow. Uh, because um, it's easy to get sucked into the excitement and the clickbait um, and it and it can and it can actually harm you you know astrology should really be there for your general background support we shouldn't rely on that you know if you're pulling tarot cards constantly to find answers to things you're lacking your center if you're endlessly watching astrology videos and thank you for watching uh, but if you're endlessly watching these videos for an anchor to something you've lost your connection to yourself so uh, find that and um, and feel that every day a little part of every day come back to yourself come back to your anchor um, and I think then you'll find that you'll be able to move through these times with a lot more grace and dignity and you'll be less susceptible to being sucked in to the uh, intensity and the drama uh, in the world around us. Um, we need more people to be uh, constructive. We need more archetypal mothers in this universe. So I'll leave it at that. I wish you a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas if you celebrate that. Uh, I will be back with more videos. I'm not going to do the sign by sign for this particular full moon because I don't have the time to do that um, fully. Uh, but I will be back very soon with the Jupiter stationing direct because I think that can be a very interesting uh, year ahead to observe what Jupiter is doing. And I will also be back with the 2024 videos, which I had planned to do last weekend and events uh, overtook me. 
so the 2024 videos I will do for each sign. And of course, I'll do an overview as well for our collective experience. Thank you, as always, for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm so grateful that you're a subscriber, that you, I love your comments. I really do appreciate you, even if some of your comments are pretty wacky. And by the way, um, sometimes you might notice that your comments don't appear. Um, it's because for whatever reason, YouTube has decided it needs to be parked in the, um, uh, in held for review. So it's up to the uploader to decide what is appropriate. If there are, uh, if there's a lot of vulgar language that goes into that, I don't, um, I prefer that you don't use vulgar language. It's just so much more pleasant if we can communicate in a way that's not vulgar. Um, you can express your anger in different ways or frustration. And also, uh, you know, I'm not a, averse to a few F-bombs, but it's not helpful in writing and certainly not uh, good for your comment if you want to see it um, appear in the comments before I figure out and I've got to go back in there and and figure out which comments should be uh, allowed on. Uh, I, I never, um, it's very rare that I actually forbid any particular comment. It's just that it's held for review. Another way that uh, YouTube will corral things is if there's a link. So if you're posting a link to another website or a video, it's always going to be pushed into held for review. That's not because I don't want you to post links. It's because that's the standard practice. Um, and so uh, you can spell out a link if you're just wanting to guide somebody to a website or, or something and uh, spell it out. Um, because otherwise it's considered very spammy. So there you go. Just just saying, uh, this is the, the world we live in. Um, and equally, um, I, I do want to do some videos on some more political things. I know that's not always what everybody's interested in. But uh, for those who are, I think I might move that to Rumble. Because there is uh, issues when you describe certain um, events, certain current events. There are issues with being seen, um, being um you know, either the videos can be taken down or the channel can be taken down if the powers are powers uh, that be don't like that, um, don't like the comment. There's certain keywords that are not, um, can't be spoken. This is the, this is the world of totalitarianism that we now live in. So there we are. Um, I wish you a wonderful holiday on that less than cheerful note, but let's let's make it real and uh, let's be there for each other. Um, I'm so grateful you're here right now. Bye.